Let's see. All right, so looks like we're recording. Now, this is a supplement to the week one material from E2060, that is complex numbers. I'm going to solve some, quote unquote, advanced, because like you will see, one, one of these problems, in my opinion, is not that advanced, but whatever. It's the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, JEE, Joint, joint Entrance Exam Problems. So what is the IIT JEE? Well, if you, I Googled search for IIT JEE 2012 statistics, and I got this report from IIT Delhi. So IIT are a set of premier technical institutions in India, Indian Institute of Technologies. They were started in the 1960s with West German collaboration, but whatever. I want to basically highlight from this 517 page report, this table, which shows that around 500, 479,000 students appeared, 24,000 qualified, so around 5%. So it's a very, very competitive exam. And what I would like to highlight here is, are some of these problems from complex numbers that they're beautiful conceptually. One of the, this is one of the great things about the Indian or whatever, the Eastern education system, that the problems incorporate a variety of concepts, as you will see, okay? However, the unfortunate thing about the Indian system, in my opinion, is that it just encourages blind memorization, right? Uh, they don't, at least when I studied two years in India, not only two years, but I want to get into my history, but I basically noticed that I was never explained as to where, the, like, how do, how do these problems test your concepts? Okay, that's, what I hope to do with this lecture video, that is, I would like to combine the beauty of the conceptual importance highlighted by the Indian education system with the beauty of thinking outside the box emphasized by the American education system. In my opinion, what works is a 50%, 50% combination of the two, right? Just blind memorization is one extreme. Just blindly thinking outside the box without giving importance to math is another extreme, okay, or concepts. So let's get started. Now, in this, uh, these problems I obtained from the 2012-2007 IIT J entrance exam, and the third problem, I believe, is from the Pearson Guide to Mathematics for the IIT JEE. So let's get started. And this video will hopefully be 21 minutes long, okay? So I'll take seven minutes, hopefully, to solve each problem. And... I, before I recorded this video, I did solve these problems. So I'll tell you as I am recording them where I encountered difficulty. Okay, so let's look at the first problem. I'm going to copy this problem again so I don't have to keep scrolling up. So let me paste it here. So a man walks a distance of three units from the origin towards northeast. From there, he walks four units towards the origin, to, sorry, towards northwest direction to reach a point P, and the position of P in the organ plane is what? So again, this this lecture is a supplement to the week one lecture from 2060 on complex numbers. So if you don't understand what the organ plane is, you either go through those lectures or you just go through a book on complex numbers. All right, so let's get, uh, so before we get started, this is how I approach the solution to this problem. Again, uh, from my week one lecture in E2060, there are three ideas to solving, to understanding anything or solving anything. It's just motivation, mindfulness, and practice. So first of all, I'm motivated to do all these problems. I'm excited by these problems. Okay. Second one is mindfulness. So how the heck am I being mindful here? Well, first of all, before I jump into the solution, I am going to underline some of the main ideas. So let's see, there is three units from the origin towards northeast, which is north 45 degrees east. So that's given. From there, he walks four units towards northwest to reach P. Then the position of P in the organ plane. So it's organ plane. So basically, I need to draw a picture, okay, not only for this problem, for any problem in general, okay, draw a picture. So let me see here. It says organ plane. So here it is. So it says the origin O. So he walks three units, okay, 45 degrees. So I'll try to draw it to scale. So there's three units. And this angle is 45 degrees. How do I know that? Well, if this is north, then this is obviously east. This is west, and this is south. 
Okay. But anyway, that's three units. And then he, the man again walks. Let me try to draw it to scale. So four units has to be a little bigger. And then if I draw a little north, south, east, west here, so then this correspondingly is 45 degrees, and this is four units, and here is my point P. Okay? So what they're asking is what is P in the terms of complex numbers? So for that, you have to find what P is as a complex number. So now, as you know, there are three forms of a complex number, standard form, polar form, and exponential form. So which form is it? Well, looking at the choice of solutions, it should be obvious that you need to look at it in exponential form. Well, let's call the complex number as z. So z is going to be z1 plus z2, yeah? Where z1 is the complex number, well, let me write it out. It's going to be 3 e to the j. I'm going to switch it to radians, so pi over 4. Okay, pi over 4 radians is 45 degrees. That's this complex number. Plus z2 is, well, you got to be careful. If you recall from the complex numbers lectures, I told you that this complex number, the angle we will choose is between 180 degrees counterclockwise and negative 180 degrees. So this angle is actually going to be, well, it's going to be 4 e to the j, 90 degrees, whoops, 90 degrees plus 45 degrees, so 135 degrees. Now, I'm going to write this as 135 degrees or even better, to keep consistent with the first term, I'm going to write it as pi over 2 plus pi over 4. And you'll see why I did this, okay? So, before we go on, let's examine what we have just written. Again, you got to be mindful, right? Is, does this even make any sense? So, let's see. I'm having two complex numbers in exponential form. This is the first complex number, which is given by this fellow right here. And this is the second complex number, so this looks good, okay? Now, let's start simplifying this. And innately, I wrote J because I'm an electrical engineer. But mathematically, well, J, J is square root of negative 1, but mathematically, it's I. So just remember that, that I is equal to J. All right, so let's keep working on this. Whoops. Plus 4 e to the J pi over 2 times e to the J pi over 4, so that's the laws of exponentials. So now, e to the j pi over 2 is cosine pi over 2 plus j sine pi over 2. Remember that j is equal to i. So let me just write it out as i here. So you don't get confused. So this is 4 e to the j e to the i pi over 2, which is simply i. And this is e i pi over 4. So this is 3 plus 4 i e to the i pi over 4. So the answer, therefore, the solution is actually D, okay? And I do have my answers here. And let me check that. So, tuck, 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 tuck. Yeah, so that looks good. Uh, that looks good. It is D, okay? So, that's about it for this problem. Again, Draw a picture of what, highlight the important terms, translate it to a picture if possible, and then just use your knowledge of complex numbers, being mindful along the way of laws of exponents, etc. Okay. So this problem is like very beautiful. Uh, it's, I, I, words can't express how beautiful this problem is. Just solve the problem. Okay. That's problem number one. Let's look at number two. Oh, before we look at number two, let's take a break. As usual, because we're at the seven minute mark. Let me take a break. Okay, so let's get started again. Uh, during the break, I took the liberty of copying and pasting the second problem. So we can directly get started. Uh, solution. So again, read the problem and think about it before you just jump into writing stuff, right? Let z be a complex number such that the imaginary part of z is non-zero. So let me start underlining important ideas here. Let z be a complex number, the imaginary part of z is non-zero, and a is blah. A is that is real, then A cannot take the value, blah, okay? All right, so Z is a complex number. So again, the question is, what kind of form should I write it in? Standard form, 
uh, polar form, exponential form. Looking at this, I'm doing the sum of complex numbers. So let me, and I'm looking at the imaginary part of Z. Something tells me I should write Z in standard form, okay? Notice something else. I'm being mindful that I haven't written Z as A plus IB because that's the, that's what you're, or that's what we are trained to do. That Z is a complex number of form A plus IB, but they're already using the A here. Okay, so don't write Z as A plus IB. Then you're, then we're screwed, right? We can't solve the problem. So Z is X plus IY. So the imaginary part of Z is non-zero. So what is the imaginary part? Recall that the imaginary part of Z is simply Y, and that's not equal to zero. Okay. All right. Uh, then A is Z squared plus Z plus, Z squared plus Z plus one is real. Therefore, A, which is Z squared plus Z plus one is real. So first of all, I have to find out what this is. So let me do that. So I know what uh, Z is. And as I'm writing this, I'm thinking to myself that once I get this complex number A in standard form, I have to make its imaginary part equal to zero. Why? A is purely real. Okay. So let me do that. So this is, duh, 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 let me take a note of my time here. So I'm uh, so I'm using the fact that i squared is negative one. So let's see, a well a plus b the whole squared is a squared plus b squared plus two ab, blah blah blah. So let me combine the uh, let me do one more step here, so I can get the real and the imaginary parts. Okay, so what's the real part is x squared minus y squared, and this is our a. Okay, it's x squared minus y squared plus one plus i. Wait, I'm missing something. So let's see, x squared minus i squared, oh yeah, there's a plus x I'm missing. So let me write this out again. Notice that I'm being mindful, right? I'm thinking as I'm writing. Plus one plus i times two x. Well, let me factor out a y as well. Two x plus one, okay? Therefore, the a is purely real, okay? So that means that the imaginary part of A, which is y to x, y, must be zero because A is purely real. Okay? Therefore, y times 2x plus 1 should be equal to zero. However, we know that y cannot be equal to zero. Therefore, if that's true, because that was a condition of the problem, this implies since y cannot be equal to zero, this imply that x, 2x plus 1 has to be zero, or x has to be equal to negative 1 half. Okay, that's great. Therefore, if I take uh, the equation 2, that is x equals 1 half, 2 in, and substitute back in 1, because why am I substituting it back in 1? Let's go back to the question. What's it asking? It's asking what is a. So, well, I need to see if I can simplify a, the expression for a, I'm sorry, and I can, right, because I have x equals negative half now. Two and one implies this is negative half, x, oh, let me just write it out. So this is negative half squared minus y squared plus negative a half plus one plus i, well, and you can see that since x equals negative half, that is a is purely real, this guy just drops out, all right? There it is. So this is a quarter minus y squared. One minus a half is a half. So this is a quarter plus a half is three quarters minus y squared. Now, we know y is not equal to zero. Therefore, three implies that a, there's no way a can be equal to three quarters. A can be equal to three quarters because you're subtracting a positive number from three quarters. So the answer is D again. Well, it's lucky that both <laughs> the uh, choice for one and two is D. Therefore, the solution is D. And let me check the answer. And that's correct, right? So 
basically we have another 30 seconds before our 14 minute mark break so let me recap again the beauty of this problem right it combines a bunch of things do you understand what it means and do you understand what form of a complex number you have to choose for to make the problem easy to solve uh standard form in this case can you simplify complex numbers do you understand the algebra of complex numbers can you impose the conditions given in the problem and can you interpret the conditions right it's a beautiful problem again i'm so excited to be able to solve this problem and hopefully you are too all right time to break, take a break and to tackle the last problem and i guarantee that the choice for the last problem is not d okay i will be back to quote arnold schwarzenegger okay continuing uh, as usual i have copied and pasted the third problem so getting us ready to solve it again before we get started let's look at this problem and in this case compared to the i'm i was i'm fortunate that the first two problems i was able to solve as i was just doing it right but this problem i got stuck and i had to really think in one place and i'll tell you where i got stuck so you also well, the point is to help you think right now before we get started one important point is this log here is basically the natural log it's log bc right so this problem combines complex numbers natural uh, logarithms and trigonometry okay so basically you have to know complex uh, you have to be no complex numbers inside out the laws of logarithms and trigonometric expressions okay so let me start out by let me think so if i now this is ln of a over b ln of x over y right ln of x over y is ln of x minus ln of y yeah so that's what i'm thinking that they want us to use so let me write out what we have to use so so ln of x over y is ln of x minus ln of y not only that ln of e to the w if you will is w yes because e and ln are inverse functions and the reason why i write this so these are the properties they want us to use okay and you should to be honest like know these properties if you are a second year electrical engineering student in any university anywhere in the world right if you don't well go back to your basic math courses and understand logarithms and exponentials okay now this e here should immediately well hopefully immediately get in your head that wait a minute i have to rewrite these two complex numbers in guess what exponential form so let's do that So let me now start with tan of i. Well, let me just put it as ln, so you don't get confused that it's not log base ten, uh, like that. Tan of i, ln. Okay, so a plus i b, uh, a minus i b, and a plus i b have the same magnitude. So let me write this as uh, let. So over here. kind of don't lose track of what i'm doing and i think my program just crashed yes it did let me pause this let me continue all right so z is a minus i a plus ib or a minus ib then this one is magnitude of z e to the i the inverse tangent of minus b over a yes and the denominator complex number is magnitude of z e to the i tangent of b over a so that and that okay so basically you can see that the magnitudes cancel and then here it is so ln of a over b is i times ln of a which is e to the i the inverse tangent of minus b over a minus i times the ln of the well, ln of x over y e to the i inverse tangent of and i messed this up this should be inverse tangent b over a remember mindfulness okay so three things to for understanding any concept mind motivation mindfulness and practice okay 
All right. Now, let me use rule number two here. Let me box this out so you don't get confused. Uh, so ln of e to the i, well, ln of e to the x is just x. So this becomes the tangent of i times i inverse tangent of minus b over a minus i times i, the inverse tangent of b over a. So if you want, put this in curly braces, and there's a tangent applied to this. So basically, this becomes i squared, well, i squared is negative 1, so you get the tangent of, well, tan inverse of minus theta is negative tangent inverse of theta. So that's, so let me write that out. So let me do that over here. I'll try to stick to 21 minutes, but I have only 30 more seconds. So I'm going to go a little over. So, and yeah, it looks like I'm crashing again. So let me pause this. Okay, continuing. The tangent inverse, whoops, it's a big inverse, of negative theta is negative tangent inverse of theta. This is trigonometry. Well, if you don't know this, you can actually prove this by writing tangent as sine over cosine and then taking inverse functions. But uh, again, you should know this from your basic calculus course, okay? Or basic trigonometric course, what am I saying? So i squared is negative one, negative sign, the negative sign from here cancels the negative sign from here. So basically, I'll get this as tangent inverse of b over a, okay? This is i squared is negative one, negative one times the negative is positive one. So basically, I'll get two of these guys. All right, so actually this is not where I got stuck, okay? So what it is, what it now, you gotta be very careful that tangent of tangent inverse, tangent and tangent inverse are inverse functions, but not tangent and two tangent inverse. So basically you just can't simply apply this tangent or tangent inverse and say, oh yeah, this is just two B over A or B over A. Well, first of all, that solution is not even here. It's second of all, that's wrong. So what the heck do you do now? And this is where I had to think. And basically, my experience, my practice told me, let me do this, right? Now, let two tangent, whoops, inverse of B over A equals theta, some angle, right? This implies that b over a is tangent of theta over two. Okay, so what? Number one, I mean, that's number one, right? One implies we need, well, if two tangent inverse of b over a is theta, we need tan theta, okay? So now, let's call this two, Let's call this three. Did I write? I don't think I wrote that. Exp no. So I was going to write that up here. Let me not do that. Okay. In the sense, this is what I have to think, right? And the sense, hmm, two and three imply that I think I need. Ah, it's going to crash again. Let me just pause this. Continue. Continuing. All right. Sorry, my tablet keeps on crashing. Probably it's having, it's getting disturbed by these IIT problems. I think I need tan 2 theta. This expression, 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. Okay, let me put this in red. In my opinion, getting, as you will see, Yeah, it's, I might have to restart my computer because it's crashing, my window journal is crashing so much. I'm sorry about this, let me pause this again. Okay, so, in my opinion, relating the fact, that, I mean, relating this expression to this is going to be, is the crux of this, 
is the crux of this problem, right? So how well how do you relate these two? Well, here it is. So let me go back to the black and then tell you that there. I thought it crashed. Oh, don't tell me it crashed. No, it didn't crash. Therefore, tan 2 times theta over 2 is 2 tan theta over 2 over 1 minus tan squared theta over 2 using this expression, okay? Well, arg. Okay, here it's crashing again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this problem and then simply record the lecture. I'll be back. Okay, continuing. And I'm sorry about the technical difficulties towards the end of this presentation, but uh, I've written out the solution. It's very simple. Once you understand the relation between tan two theta and this expression and this problem, well, tan theta it can be written as tan two times theta over two, but using number four, this is two tan theta over two over one minus tan squared theta over two. But wait a minute, I know what tan theta over two is from number two. That's two b over a over one minus b squared a squared, and we're done. If you simplify this, you'll get two a b over a squared minus b squared. So the answer is C. Okay, so we are done with this uh, lecture on solving these advanced complex numbers, trigonometry, algebra problems. But the point again is to motivate you to do more problems. Okay, so in the sense, what I would, what ideally you should do now is get really uber excited about the IIT JE entrance exam problems and go Google search them and start doing more problems. You'll find a lot of papers, and the IIT JE has not only mathematics, it's got physics, it's got chemistry. So yeah, uh, go have fun doing these problems.